Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do a video for Quilt Easy on the Butler Robotic System. Today we're going to talk about patterns. So stay tuned, I'll meet you at my desktop. I'm on Ann Bright Designs website where I have an account. I have in my files, I'm looking at my most recent downloads, and I have a file here called Pineapples dash QLI. I'm just going to show you how I would download that, although I've already done this uh, and I don't need it. I just want to show you the process. So once you pay for a file, you have an account, you can go in and then you can download those files as many times as you want. So here I've just clicked on the file. It automatically opened it up for me to do a save. And I can change the file name if I want. I tend to just leave those alone so that I know I'm not purchasing another design with a different name that's the same. <laughs> so, and it's also going to download as a zip file. Now over here, you have to tell it where you want to save. Most times it's going to save it in your downloads. And that's fine. If that's where you want to save your files, but I have a very sophisticated file management system. And so I have already gone through here and told it that I wanted to save it under Gamo, Butler Computerized System, Upload to Butler, and then I have another folder that's called Pantos. So it's going to be saved in that folder for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. Down here on my screen you can see where I have the file saved and when I click this up button it's going to allow me to show that file in my folder and it's actually highlighted at the bottom but I'm going to scroll my screen so that we can put it up in the middle let's take a break from this to give you the clue word for today Find a place or two that you can hang your scissors. So scissors is the keyword for today. Now I'm going to double click on the zip file so that I can open it up so that I can copy out the QLI file that I downloaded. Also note that files ending with .qcc will also upload to Butler. I just tend to download QLI just out of habit but either one will work. And then once I open the file folders, I have two files here. One is a PDF showing me what the file will look like as it's quilted onto the quilt top. And the other file is the one that I want to copy to my USB flash drive so that I can upload it to Butler. So I'm going to click on the file and right click and then select copy. Now that I have copied my file, I need to tell it where over here I want it to copy. And most times you're going to be putting it on some external device like a USB. So I have a USB drive over here on G, so I'm going to click on it. And then what happens is I have all of these different folders that I have already on my drive. And I actually want to put this into Pantos. So I will double click on that so that I can get into the Pantos folder. And I have already copied this once just to make sure everything was working right. But what I would normally do is right click and tell it to paste. And because the file is already there, it's going to pop up me a, a box that's going to say, do you want to replace, skip this file or compare both files uh, you can decide if they're different to keep both both versions or not. We already know that this is the same file, but I'm just going to click go ahead and say replace the file in the de destination just so we have a file that we can do here. Normally, I would not have to do that. So instead of putting the pineapples on my tablet, which is already on there, I'm going to go in and put in the simple feathers border to border file. So in order to do that, you need to go over here to your USB drive, right click, and tell it you want to eject. 
you never want to just pull your USB out. It will work for a while, but eventually you're going to destroy your file management on your USB and then the USB will crash. So if you can, always try to eject your USB. I know it's ejected because I didn't have anything else open in my file manager. I could have more than one file manager screen open. It closed that, so I know it's okay for me to remove my USB. So now we're at the tablet. I have my USB that I'm going to insert into my tablet under here. So I've just got to look down here and insert this USB. Okay. So I have just booted my Butler Robot tablet and that's all that I have done. And now to import the file, we're just going to go over to Patterns. And then we're going to go to our Import Export tab. And here we are going to import a, a pattern. Now I can import a file or I can import a whole folder. I can also tell it where I want it to import. There is a folder that's called imported. If I don't tell it anything else, that's where that file is going to go. I know that it's a Panto, so I want to put that file into my Panto directory. So what I'm going to do is put click on Pantos. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark here. And you can see now where that has changed to Pantos. So I'm just going to tell it I want to import a file, although it's the only file in the folder. I could have said import the folder. And it's asking you where is this file located. It could be located on this tablet, so that would be internal. We have it on a USB, so we're going to select external. And then it's pulling up the files from my external USB. It just automatically went to that. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell it the Pantos folder. And then if it was just upload that folder, I wouldn't have to do the next step. But I'm now going to have to open that folder so I can tell it what file I want. If I had numerous files in here, then you could select the file you want to upload. If you wanted to, again, do the whole folder, you could have done that as well. I'm going to tell it to open. And then it's telling me import finished, one item imported, all patterns tagged as Pantos. And so now I'm just going to hit the check mark. How do I know my pattern is here? We can go over here to patterns and we can pull up Pantos. And then we could search for simple feathers. Which is right here. And I'm just going to hit it so that it will open up and pop out here. So that's the panto that I just put in here. One other thing I want to talk about is some patterns. You can see where it has its start and stop. And if I go up and do to fill my quilting area, you can see where my green is on the outside, my red stops on the other edge. Um, this panto here is fine to do. You could do auto fill when you're putting your patterns in. Auto fill would make it fit in a spot, but what it also does is it may stretch your pattern out of the actual digitized design. So I don't normally use auto fill here. I will go back and undo that. I just hit my undo. I'm going to go back and hit plus again. And if I want to put that pattern in, I will go to crop up here. And then I would make sure that this was locked so that it keeps everything in proportion. And then hit the crop that has your, or the merge. This is sizing. I'm sorry, not cropping. I will go up here to the sizing button and then when I hit this lock it's going to give me the if I hit the one with the graduation 
it will condense this all down equally so it's not changing the design sometimes it doesn't matter which one you use but other times it will and then because this is now dropped to the bottom of the box I would have to go over here to move and tell it to just move that to the top by clicking the top arrow the top button uh, one other thing I want to talk about on designs so I want to get out of here so I want to undo what I've just done here and sometimes every screen you get on it won't give you an undo so I just keep hitting various screens until it gives me the undo I'm gonna go back to patterns and I'm going to pick a panto that I know can be a problem when I first started I didn't know what to do with this panto here so I will add in enough to fill my screen as you can see here the start is on the inside of the box which means that that stitching is going to start on the inside of your quilt you're not gonna have that start on the outside edge of your quilt if you just start stitching this design as is what I like to do is go to move and I like to just tell it to center that design in here and then I go to crop and I'm just hoping that when I go to crop that crop will move that start to the edge and not start on the inside I hope you saw that so when I went over there and cropped it out then it put it so that it was that start is now here the end is now over here so that was something that I didn't understand at first uh, when I saw that I thought oh I can't use this design because it's starting in the middle of my screen let's go back and undo I'm going to go back into patterns And I can go to my recent. Oh, my simple feathers isn't there. Okay, so we'll go. Another thing you can do is you can search for your design. And you don't have to type the whole thing. I just got simple FEA. I'm going to hit the check mark here and it's going to pull up anything that says simple FEA so I'm gonna do check mark again and then we'll go back into here and I wanted to talk about when you have a pat toe that's border to border which is what this one is and one that's edge to edge border to border means that this can be a panto that you can put into a border there is no nesting that's necessary with this pattern so I'm just gonna show you if I hit the plus for the vertical all I have to do is just space this up to however tight I want this to stitch but I don't have to necessarily do any nesting so you can see where this is just just by me scooting it up I'm not really nesting this pattern is going to kind of start and stop on the same line when you have a pattern that I just previously showed you that we're nesting just keep hitting screens until you get your undo buttons when you want to undo so I'm gonna go back to patterns go to recent we're just gonna pick anything that needs to be nested this is now a design here that will have to be nested so when I put the repeats in on this one you can see how you've got all of this blank space underneath so once I did all of my cropping and lining up and that kind of thing because you can see where my start is on the inside I wouldn't want that to happen I would add another one probably and then I would go over here to move put it in the middle and then go over to crop and tell it to crop there so that way I've got my start and stop on the end 
However, this is a design that before you start stitching the first line, you want to make sure you've got your nesting correct. So once I get the nesting correct, I can go into my minus and tell it to scoot that up so that it's nesting. You see that? This is an edge-to-edge -edge design. It's not a border-to-border -border design. A border-to-border -border design, you won't have gaps in your stitching. An edge-to-edge -edge design means that there's a possibility you're going to have to do some partial row stitching. And we have videos. I'm sure somebody else is covering that. I've covered that in some other videos that are on my site. I just want you to know the difference between a border-to-border -border and an edge-to-edge. -edge. And before you stitch any lines on your quilt top, you should make sure that you add in a second vertical row to see where that row is going to nest. If you don't like the spacing, you need to take care of that now. So now that I've got that in here and I know where my spacing is, it's going to remember that I want it at a negative 3.30 for spacing. So now I can go in and take out that second row because I can't stitch two rows on my frame. I can only stitch one of this pattern at a time. You can also go over here to this full layout. It, uh, you can put in your quilt measurement, your length of your quilt, which means the part that you're rolling, because it could be the length or the width, depending on what you're rolling. So you want that piece, your top, as it's rolling on your top-up bar, how many rows will it take to stitch this? So if I told it that my quilt length is 72 inches, it's telling me that it's going to be 8.9 passes in order to stitch this design. I don't want 8.9 passes. I either want 8 passes or 9 passes. So I just do, if it's greater, 5 or greater, I go up. If it's 4 and less, I go down. So this point number. So if I got 8.2, then I would make this 8 passes. But I've got 8.9, so I'm going to hit that and tell it to make this 9 passes instead. And now, when I do that, I'm not going to have a partial row. I will have a partial row because I've got to crop my top and bottom, which we have videos on that as well. Uh, I know some people have done it for Butler. I've also done it for Butler on my YouTube channel. So, this here is where you will be stitching that out. So, I'm not going into that now because I noticed that somebody else has done videos on that, uh, doing this whole training series. But I just want you to know the things that you need to do that are important for your quilt. I have people asking, how come my quilt top um, doesn't end right at the bottom? And sometimes when I get to the bottom of my quilt top, and if it's not lining up appropriately, I will just go in here, get my handles, and say my quilt is a half inch because it drew up, so it's a half inch shorter. So then I will just hit these buttons and move it up a half inch or whatever I want. If it's longer, then I just move it down. The eye is not going to notice that last little section that you've tweaked just to make sure that your quilt top is ending at the end of your quilt and not ending an inch above, which is too much space right before your binding. So you can move this up and down for your last row as needed. But also it's critical that you tell it what your nesting space is between as well as how many passes you want to make on your system. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please ask below.